Okay, good morning everybody. Lou Depot back here again. And real quickly, we're going to go over a little bit about Sola, not too much of actually doing the job. I had a request about going over this, so we're going to go over it. But more about the knowledge of it and the, the cost savings, the details of it, but not the actual work, because you're probably not going to be installing a solar system yourself. And it, do it yourself plumbing, this is something you're probably not going to do. But real quickly, the main thing about solar that we do, that we actually know works, is electric only, which is panels on the roof, which strictly delivers electric, and domestic hot water solar, where the sun heats the hot water that you shower with and you use for your washing machine, dishwasher, faucets, and whatever. So that's the two we're going to go over. And I, I started to draw, but I stopped, because when you see a whole bunch of drawing on, on the board at once, it's very confusing. But simply with hot water, domestic hot water solar, they'll put one or two panels on the roof. They're usually four foot by three foot, because that's enough for the hot water. And it'll be a two-pump system, two-circulator pump system, because up here in the northeast, or actually anywhere where there's winters, water can freeze and ruin the whole system. So they don't pump water up. They pump a glycol up through the panels, an antifreeze, so it can't freeze. This way you can use it summer and winter. And basically what they do is they'll install a heat exchanger in the home somewhere next to an electric hot water heater or a storage tank, and they'll put a pump. Every time you see this triangle, that's a pump. And what they'll do is they'll pump the glycol up through the panels so the sun heats it, and it returns back down into this heat exchanger. But what's special about this heat exchanger is it has a second tank or a coil in it where the true cold domestic water that touches your skin goes into it and steals the BTUs and gets hot, but never actually touches the dirty glycol or the antifreeze. But it steals the BTUs from it and it gets hot. And that coil would look something like this. inside that tank. So it's a coil inside the tank and this would simply be hooked up to an electric hot water heater or a storage tank with, with another pump. With a pump that goes like that with the water flowing through. Now this water you shower with. The circulation is this way, it gets hot and comes back into the tank and then of course you have your cold in and your hot out to your actual shower. So that's one way they get solar with a two pump system. One circulating the good clean water into an electric hot water heater and the other one circulating the glycol through what's called a heat exchanger where you get the hot water for free from the heat exchanger. The circulation being this way with the water, the circulation being this way with the glycol. And this is usually an electric hot water heater which has a wire hooked up to it. It doesn't turn on because there's a thermostat in it. There's also sensors that shuts this pump on and off when the water gets hot enough. I'm not going to draw all that. It's in there though so it works right. Water gets too hot, the pump shuts off so it doesn't steal any more heat from the sun. And if there is no sun out the electric hot water heater actually kicks on and you get hot water through electricity so you can always take a shower even if there's no sun. That's the one way and we'll go over the next way where it's a one pump system. That happens to be a two pump system.